So we live in an era of great opportunities. Uh, we witness every day a new discoveries, and some of them might end up changing our lives. Compared to a few uh, decades ago, we uh, have internet that it eases a lot the way we access knowledge. We have better medical services, and we have uh, better cars, uh, more comfortable, safer. We have, uh, we have a lot of improvements in our lives happening every day. But the question now is, how uh, architecture is keeping up with all this? It is not. Architecture is being built pretty much in the same way as it was 100 years ago, with the same methods, with steel structures and, and reinforced concrete. Pretty much same as 100 years ago, as I said. Uh, these techniques, they restrain a lot the creativity, and they, are, they require a lot of energy. So now the question is, what should we be looking for a, an architecture worth of the era we're living? The architecture needs to be more creative, more responsible with resources, and build up on performance. And when it comes to all these criteria, nature plays a wonderful, uh, has a lot to offer. So we'll go through a, a list or a series of images of patterns in nature where we try to capture the, uh, the circumstances under which these uh, patterns are created. So rivers. Rivers are a wonderful flow of material and uh, an energy. They basically interact with the landscape in a way that constantly affect each other. At the end, the application of all these operations generates a field of, uh, a field of panels which, uh, which uh, has a satisfying complexity in a sense. But they remain quite abstract pieces because it's not easy to imagine these as architectural ones. So uh, from here, the next one, the next step is to actually build something that is scalable, something that can become architecture, can enclose a space. So uh, the idea is to weave the components with each other, starting with a very simple uh, setup where like fabric pipes are being uh, woven with each other and uh, are being uh, anchored to a temporary uh, support structure. Then this custom-made uh, funnel uh, facilitates all the pouring process. And once that is all settled, it's ready to stand in its own and without, without the temporary structure. The unwrapping process of the fabric from the plaster, it's very uh, delicate but not difficult. And all the pieces are, are very distinct, so they are independent in a sense, but they rely on each other uh, being interwoven, and in this way they, they, they cannot slide away. So they guarantee the kind of stability required. The final, the final uh, outcome of this experiment at this point is, uh, is this kind of a dome-like, which needs to be flipped upside down. Uh, and the general curvature is given by the gravity. Uh, this is not a new approach into architecture, like uh, catenary models has been used extensively before, and especially by Gaudi and Fraiotto that, uh, that has uh, experimented these, uh, these uh, methods like extensively. The difference, though, in this case is that uh, the model itself claims to be the architectural piece and not just a study model. So having achieved this uh, kind of uh, uh, outcome in a one meter by one meter dimension, it gives enough uh, ground uh, to believe that uh, this can become a proper structure for a building scale. From now on, the research carries on in Kosovo, not far from Pristina, in a similar way as the previous experiment, but this is uh, just larger. Uh, with uh, putting together, so putting together this uh, the temporary structure, uh, anchoring all the uh, fabric pipes and weaving them. And uh, previous to this, they were done some tests to the actual fabric in order to make sure that they can hold the load and the pressure of the concrete. And at the extremities, they have these rigid pipes so they could uh, facilitate the, the pouring process. These improvised funnels 
trying to be very helpful. And uh, now with this video, I'll try to, to synthesize the entire process very quickly. So the entire setup is there. And uh, in total, there were like 10 people working for this for like uh, at the casting moment for like a couple hours. Uh, everything was uh, kept in a kind of low-tech approach in purpose just to not have them later claim saying, oh yeah, to do this you need to have this higher technology involved and stuff. So the point was to keep it very accessible technology at the end. Uh, at, at the end of the couple of hours of casting, this was the outcome. And uh, we have what we have here, it's a bulgy structure hanging there with all the pieces kind of uh, relying on each other. So um, uh, that's kind of what, what keeps them together, the fact that they're woven. But, and this is how, where the research is at the moment. The next step uh, I need to take care about is the uh, uh, flipping part, turning all this upside down. And there are two, two theoretical ways, this one, at least in my mind at this moment. Uh, one is dealing with this as a one uh, piece, entirely in one piece, trying to flip it in one go. Uh, a similar example of this kind of approach is the arch of the Wembley Stadium, which is something like 150 meters span, very high, and that was all assembled horizontally and then pulled up entirely uh, vertically. Uh, so would be, this would require a kind of uh, uh, temporary structure, very uh, kind of uh, robust and uh, with a lot of in-between uh, connections. So this would be kind of a bicycle wheel, but in the dome-like. And then you could just flip entirely like that. The other approach or the other technique would be to, to flip it in different parts, uh, to split it in different parts, and then flip each part uh, individually. The only condition is that each part needs to have uh, uh, enough connections in order to guarantee its own stability. Uh, this would be quite convenient because you could move it easier and you could uh, just put it inside and assemble it in there. Uh, now to, to give the last conclusions about this research is that it doesn't it doesn't claim or it doesn't want to be build just one single dome. It's about uh, building a method where material behavior is uh, an integral part of the design process. Uh, conceptually, this, uh, this gives to the uh, entire approach a certain objectivity because the final form is a pure expression of the material as well. By the practical point of view, uh, there are not, uh, in all this process, there are not uh, elaborate uh, formworks or physical joints or conventional uh, reinforcement involved. And in our today's building industry, these are the most expensive items when, when we want to build a concrete structure. Therefore, uh, this makes this quite affordable. So, if proven, and test it properly, this could become a proper building, uh, proper building uh, method very, uh, with its own inherent design properties and uh, in achievable in, uh, with retained costs. About the uses, it can, it can be anything from a structure for a house, especially in areas, for example, that has a certain need to build quick structure and with uh, cheap costs in areas where they had happen to have some natural calamities or something, so it's kind of uh, uh, urgent. Or it could be the structure for a large spanning venue, for like sport venue or any other thing. Thank you. <laughs>